back guys and today I've got for you the BMW 4 Series. Yes, it's the one with that grille. So let's tackle the elephant in the room first, or should I say the elephant's trunk. Now these elongated kidney grills or nostrils, whatever you want to call them, there is a precedent for this kind of shape in BMW's history if you go way back. But the question is, do they work on this modern looking car? Now, personally, I'm actually not minding them so much and that's coming from somebody that never got used to the so-called bangle butt from the 2000s BMW 7 series in fact it just ruined the 7 series for me even now when people say it's aged well I just could never get my head around and I just never grew used to that um, that protruding boot or butt whatever you know however you want to perceive it but this however I am getting used to and there's two reasons for that firstly in the metal it's just far less obvious than it is in pictures, particularly with this blacked out grill and the blacked out surrounds that you get on this M Sport version. I also think it works better on darker colors like this uh, Arctic race blue that they have on this car. And in this market, we've got the number plate kind of bisects it halfway across. And that kind of reduces the obviousness or the in-your-faceness of this grill. So it kind of makes it half anyway, so it doesn't actually look like it's that long. And finally, okay, yes, I know that's, that's more than two reasons, isn't it? But I can forgive the grill, when disguised as it is, when it sits on the car, the rest of which is so nicely designed. It's got really nice, elegant, but subtle, stylish lines down the side, and I really like the rear three quarters on this car. Also, to the question of why does the 4 Series have this grill, but the 3 Series doesn't. Now, of course, the M3 and the M4, the new ones, they have an even more overt and aggressive version of this that really kind of sticks out. And I suppose for the sporty intent of those cars, it kind of makes sense. Uh, but how comes this is different from, the, from its sibling, the 3 Series? Well, to answer my own question, the 3 Series is one of BMW's best-selling cars. And I guess you don't want to come out with a radical design statement on that car and risk polarizing your established market base. However, I suspect that as people start to get used to this grill on the 4 Series, we might see a midlife facelift on the 3 Series, and at some point, it'll also end up with this grill. So this, of course, is the BMW 420. It gets the 2-litre 4-cylinder petrol engine turbocharge, of course, putting out 184 brake horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque from as little as 1,350 RPM. That gives it a 0 to 62 miles per hour acceleration time of 7.3 seconds and a top speed of 147 miles per hour. BMW claim combined fuel consumption on this car 42.8 miles per gallon. On the longer run, I've seen 45.2 and a bit more than that, actually. So that's perfectly reasonable. CO2 emissions on this is 152 grams per kilometer. Prices for this model start at just under the 40k mark but with options and of course it's a BMW so you're going to need to put options on it. It takes the price of this actual test car up to just under 49,000 pounds. I'll go through the options once we get into the car. Now of course as usual we're going to take a look at the practicality of a coupe. We're going to check out the boot first. We're going to look at the interior space, uh, what the front is like and then of course we're going to take it for that all important important drive. Before we do any of that, make sure that you're subscribing to youtube.com forward slash browncarguy. Make sure you follow me on browncarguy.com and of course on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and even TikTok. Just follow my hashtag which is hashtag browncarguy and you can sponsor and support me on patreon.com forward slash browncarguy. Cool, let's get into this. Yeah, that was Shmi 150 and Johnny Lieberman in that video. So to this car, it is lower and longer than the 3 Series. It's also a little bit wider, particularly here at the back. And the other change over the 3 Series is it's said to have a stiffer chassis and a sporty tuned suspension, plus a lower center of gravity. Now the 420 is going to be the best seller, according to BMW, in the range. So it kind of makes sense that we're testing this one. Now. There's a button underneath here, but you can also open this um, with the, the key fob. You've got the button there, and there you go. So it is actually powered. 
and it's powered because you can see that there is a close button there as well once you open that it's about i think about 400 liters of boot space in there which is not bad for a saloon shape to be honest i don't think it loses that much compared to the saloon so it's actually quite a practical coupe if you think about it you've got a pocket on this side with a first aid kit in there and another pocket on that side and um this is to drop the seats if you want to so there are split folding seats and you can drop them from both sides and you've got a hook to hang stuff on so you can get longer stuff through there as well that's the advantage of having a coupe with the rear seats the great thing about this being a coupe is that some manufacturers are still making them for a lot of companies coupes don't really make sense they're a niche product and for a lot of customers they're like why am i paying more for two less doors and the aggravation of getting in and out of the bag Talking of the aggravation of getting in and out of the back, maybe I should try that next. There you go, these beautiful balti seats, as you would call them, the bucket seats. Nice leather line, there's a little handle on the back, and once you do that, the seat not only slides forward, but it actually moves up and down as well. Um, not so much this one actually, but the passenger one does. That should give me enough. So this is a bigger door, obviously, on the coupe. And that's actually given me a fair amount of space to get in here. Uh, you know, although I am a big chap, so <laughs> you know, it's not the easiest thing in the world. So let me do that. And then that should now return to my driving position so this is actually set to my driving position i am six foot two with long legs as you can see it's still moving back it's still moving back it's now stopped that's not too bad that's not bad at all actually so this is the first time i've sat in the back here now you can see there's some light underneath there the wiggle room isn't much my feet are fairly the top the toes of my feet are fairly hemmed into there but no problems with my shins back there loads of room and even the knees there is a scooped out area just behind the seats here but that actually leaves room to spare headroom's a bit tight i've got to be honest headroom is a bit tight for me so this roof slopes down obviously it's a coupe roof it slopes down so that's a little bit on the tight side but other than that it's not too bad and what else have i got back here I've got an armrest with uh, typical BMW cup holders in there. That's not too bad. Obviously, Isofix Chelsea anchor points, as you would expect. I've got two micro USB points there. That's quite handy, isn't it? That's very clever. And I've also got uh, vent controls back here. So two vents and vent controls. It's not too bad. There's a little hook as well here. I guess that's for the driver more. Oh, no, actually, that's on the other side as well. Um, it's not too bad in terms of claustrophobia, although this is a very small window, but having said that, it doesn't feel so bad. Um, this roof line for me is bothersome, honestly speaking. I mean, I don't think I could tolerate sitting like this for too long, but for short journeys, I wouldn't have an issue at all. So actually, this is far better than you'd think, but it also it makes sense. And going back to what I was saying earlier about coupes, that the advantage of coupes over sports cars, for example, is that they do have this facility. But why would you do that when you don't get extra doors? Because you get the style and the panache and, you know, the charisma of driving something that looks sporty and coupe-like, and in this case is sporty, as we'll see later on, but you still get the practicality of the rear seats, which, you know, let's be honest, this is longer than the 3 Series, so you'd expect it to have sufficient space in the back. Obviously, the 3 Series would be a more comfortable, accessible car. But having said that, this isn't too bad at all. Right, time to get into the business end, the front of the car. How easy will it be for me to get out of here? So first of all, I'll wait for that. So that seat actually lifts up when it moves forward i don't i'm not sure this one does but it gives more room so it's quite clever it's got lots of clever little touches in here okay here we go not too bad and by the way this seat and these seats fold almost completely flat down to give you a flat loading space back here here we are at last in the front of the bmw 420 now this is nice this thing comes out to give you to give you your seat belt uh, i always end up saying thank you to it you know and i'm going to take it now and just say thank you because i don't know how long that's going to stay out there but that's nice isn't it so that comes out like that that's pretty good and uh, over here you've got a door warning thing obviously i've got that door open so that's showing up there and uh welcome to bmw this is i think it's a 10 inch um 
10.3 inch touchscreen if I'm if I'm not mistaken this one yeah and uh, obviously full touchscreen I'm not going to spend too much time going into this interior the interior is fantastic it's fabulous it's very BMW it's just exactly as you'd expect it's very well thought out lots of clever touches I mean like the stop start for example it will know that's just gone back in again. It will know when to start the engine even before you lift off the brake because it anticipates that the car in front has moved in traffic and then it starts up. Lots of little clever things like that. The starter button is down here and obviously this is where you've got all the modes as well and all of the things. Um, adaptive is basically you leave it to its own devices. It figures out what the best mode is to have it in drive. The sport you can configure as well. I'll show you that in a minute. There's all the sensors. Got full load of cameras and the cameras are really clever because it, it when you're in a tight space the cameras will automatically come on there there is a button here down here so you can press that button and you will see the camera um, in this case it's showing the uh, rear camera sometimes in traffic it shows a front camera I think you can configure it as well um, press it to turn it off but if I go into reverse you'll see that it shows you a full 360 around the car and the interesting thing is that once you stop so if you stopped in a parking space then it will show you how the doors will open so if there's anything obstructing the doors you will be immediately able to see that there's something obstructing and it shows you all the, the things around the car so if there's obstacles around the car it will light them up in orange as well and Anyway, you have your iDrive here, and from here I can press the home screen. There you go. It's also got a heads up display. I don't know if you can make it out. That's really handy. Now, the Apple CarPlay Android Auto is through um, Bluetooth Wi Fi, however they do it. I'm not quite sure, but you don't have to wirely, you know, connect it up with a wire. It's all wireless, which makes sense because, of course, down here it's got a wireless charger. So you put your phone there and it automatically turns on. You have got a USB there, as well as, as of course, as you can see, a 12 volt power supply and two cup holders. This thing actually closes and it's nice and neat like that, no problem at all. Um, this is traction off. There's the cameras, parking assist. These are the modes. Oh, so I'll just show you sport, sport mode and then you've got sport and you've got individual and if you go into individual you can then uh, okay so you can then obviously configure how you want each of the things to have heated seats there on this side where's the heated steering the heated steering button is there I haven't needed it in this weather but there you go that's useful to have on here you've got active cruise control so this is quite interesting because you've got this mode so you have to turn that on to go full active cruise control and then once you do that that map in the middle is replaced by a car and uh, I don't know if I'll get a chance to show you this later on the motorway but when you're on the motorway it actually shows you the cars around you as you're driving along it will show you the cars around you on that graphic and where it detects a lorry or a bigger vehicle it actually shows it as a truck and when they move in front of you they act it actually shows that happening as well so I don't know why you need to see it here as well as with your eyes but it's kind of cool to have those game like graphics there so as I was saying when you turn on the the, the active cruise um, and right now so you can see the steering wheel now the steering wheel basically means that in the motor on the motorway it's got kind of an autopilot system it requires you to hold onto the steering wheel but it will actually steer you around the lanes and stuff like that if i press that then you can actually switch that off so you can go into the modes and you've got assisted driving which is basically when it steers for you or you've just got distance control which is basically it's just an active cruise control system so it's got all of that and then of course you can vary the distance from there there's your stereo controls there's the paddle shifts over there are the light switches um, um, underneath here there is another micro USB Let's, that's, that's two in the back one here and a normal USB there four USBs that's pretty good well done BMW let's look at the options quickly like I said I mean if you're gonna buy a BMW it's inevitable that you have to buy the option packs this one's got the M Sport package um, that one's standard on this one because it is an M Sport and that's got the uh, loudspeaker system the Harman Kardon surround sound system great stereo on this car fantastic been enjoying that um, M colored seat belts. So I don't know if you can make that out. Um, if I show you on there, you can just about make out the stripes on there. Um, so then it's got the Technology Plus Pack, which is a £3,650 option, and you want that because it's got the driver assistant professional. That's the, all of these assistant systems. It's got the head up display, drive recorder. There is a menu system in here. Um, which I'm not 100% sure how to get into. I think it's in the apps. 
Um, and once you go into that, there you go, you can actually record your drive, you can record the lap if you're doing uh, track days and stuff like that, you can actually do that and it's got other things in here, including, you know, you can pay for your parking and stuff like that. So that's all really clever, so it's got that system and of course you want that, you definitely do want that. Um, it's got the gesture control, it's got wireless charging, all the rest of it, then you've got the comfort pack. The comfort pack is £1,950 and that has the heated steering wheel bootlet uh, the power bootlet the comfort access extended storage i mean maybe that one is but it's got the electric seats and you know you want the electric seats maybe that one isn't as essential but when you're spending that much and you're spending another 1950 you might as well get that as well i suppose um then this has got the m sport uh pro package which is 2500 pound now it's interesting because it says on here that it's got the 18 inch bicolor alloy wheels. Now I've seen the wheels on this one are actually 19 inch. Um, so I don't know at some point they've been swapped out on this particular test car. Unless it says that somewhere here, I can't see it. But anyway, run flat tires, piano black, that's that stuff there. Um, M steering wheel. M aerodynamic body kit, stuff like that. Um, standard options, uh, the seat heating is standard, the rear view mirror auto dimming, first aid kit. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. Alarm system, variable sports steering is yeah that's part of the car. DAB radio, active air conditioning, automatic air conditioning, there's climate control, uh, online services. So you've got here and also you've got assistance on there as well when you go into the apps. Um, headlining, rear and rear spoiler, all the rest of it, and that takes the price up to like I said, just under forty nine thousand pounds. So that's all well and good. Time to do the most important part of when you're testing a BMW, taking it for a drive. So here we go, we're on the move now in the BMW 420i. Now I've got it in sports mode to be honest. Most of the time I've had it in, um, in um, uh, normal mode because around town it's just the gear changes and stuff. Yeah, and, and honestly it doesn't make that much of a difference. This is inherently set up uh, as a BMW and the BMW is always a bit more entertaining and engaging to drive so it's like that. But over here because I found a couple of nice corners so I've got it in sports mode and um, you know again it's that, that confidence and that precision that you get from a BMW straight away. Now you can go into manual as well. You drop it across there. Now manual changes aren't showing up on the heads up which is I thought, I thought they should do. But they are showing up on the uh, on the on the panel down there. There you go. Quick changes, but not snappy changes. To be honest, I found it best to leave the gearbox in automatic and let it do its own thing. Um, but you can also you can still use the paddles. There you go. Nice bit of torque there. You know, just as you know to get going. That's pretty good. Um, but again, you know, the good turning. Now, once you're driving this car, you're aware that it's a coupe and you're kind of compensating for the long nose and, you know, the body and stuff like that. It's a longer car. It's certainly longer than, than my old 3 Series, the E33 Series that I used to own. Um, that car was tiny compared to this one. But again, so much confidence sucking this around. That, the car kind of starts to wrap itself around you. So as I was saying, it's like initially you might be aware of it being a biggish car. Uh, well, it's not biggish. It's a 3 Series. It's a 4 Series, but it's bigger than you know they've ever been before, put it that way. But after a while, it starts to wrap itself around you, and that doesn't really seem to be an issue anymore. Um, most of the time I've had this car over the last few days, I've been driving it around town, you know? And... Um, that's where it performs uh, at its best you know it's just as a daily driver as a as a as a, a car that you, you just pound around town in without any issue and in that way i do feel i get a lot of confidence from this car wow and uh, sounds good doesn't it for a four cylinder there you go look at that it's holding the gear changes right up to about six thousand just over six thousand rpm but you get the best stuff at 1350 the torque is low down so the torque is there straight away the moment you move off um as i was saying around town just doing its thing it's a real feel-good car so with the 420 you may think well you know i mean 7.3 seconds is not to be laughed at my old e30 325i was i think 7.5 seconds or something like that so it's, it's on par with that and that was a straight six this is a four cylinder um so it's not to be laughed at the performance wise i mean look at this it takes a little while and then off it goes. I mean, you know, it's in sports mode, but you know, it's not like the punchiest uh, of cars. It's still something that you know you, that is basically um, set up to give you the excitement 
um, but not to overdo it. Uh, I guess you have to go for the more sportier versions to really get going. But having said that, you know, to do the round town stuff, to come out here and do this sort of stuff, this is more than enough. Um, and as I was saying that, you know, it's got plenty of performance for what you think. Around town is where it's actually surprisingly at its best because it just copes with the traffic really well. It will never let you down. It's got the performance, but it's got, you know, just about, I mean, it's on the borderline, but just about the right size for city uh, use to get in and out of traffic, to get into parking spots. You know, I tend to give it a little bit more of a wider berth around those ferocious curbs that you get in the city because it has got, you know, the 19 inch alloy wheels on it and you're always a little bit worried about them. But I'll go for the, the, the smaller wheels. I'd stick with the 18 because you get that in the sports pack anyway. Um, and the reason being, as I'll just demonstrate in a minute, when I turn onto uh, this road that I often use, which is one of the bumpiest roads that I know around here, um, it's not bad. I'm not saying that the ride is bad. The ride is absolutely... You see, I'm going to leave it in sports mode. So it's not like, you know, it's got the active dampers and stuff. And I'm going to leave it in sports mode. So I'm not going to put it back to compensate for it. But, oh, wow. You know, it's good. Um, I, you know, I, I can't help thinking... So anyway, so here's that bumpy road. And you can start to move around and stuff like that. It's still, it's still pretty composed though. You know, you know, it never gets... You know, out of shape or anything like that, it never gets un, you know, un, unmanageable. Um, but you can certainly feel it, feel it, and certainly around town where you get the ruts and the bumps and all of that sort of stuff. You know, with these bigger wheels, you will feel it. I suspect with the 18s, it'll be slightly better. Turn it in, no problem at all. The front really turns in nicely. It just keeps it well. You just, you know, you need to allow for the fact that it's a bigger car or it's a coupe rather, and uh, just give it, uh, just allow for that extra bit that you just need. But once it tucks in, it tucks in nicely. Uh, variable power steering on this car. Um, not a, not enough feel, of course, I would say. But you know, so uh, you know, you you kind of want more feel from a car like this. But it's good enough. But don't get me wrong, if I'm kind of sounding a little bit hesitant about endorsing this car as a driver's car, don't misunderstand me. This is very much a satisfying and enjoyable car. If you're looking for something that's outright crazy sporty, this is probably not the car. But if you're looking for something that is a great compromise between doing stuff around town, but also enjoying the drive, finding the drive satisfying, but also gaining the best out of it when you're out of town, and also cruising on the motorway. All of the features on the car are really, really helpful. It's a really useful car around town. It's got a lot of thoughtful little things in it. This BMW has put a lot of effort into this car. There's a real feel-good value about it, and there's a real um, sense of, you know, uh, I've got the right car. You know, I've got to equate it to my own personal experience as well. And there's a weird thing, like the E30, the 1988 E30 325i that I had was relatively crude in comparison to this. But wow, what an awesome car. One of my top threes that I've ever, ever owned, that's for sure. The thing about having owned that car and the thing about having owned, you know, one or two other BMWs and, and having that relationship with BMWs, the thing is like when I get into this 3 Series, even though it is so far removed from what that car was, in a way, it still feels like coming home. There's just there's just something about it. It's just that the moment I sit in this car, the moment I drive off in it, I feel very comfortable. I feel very like yeah, this is this is home. This is where I'm meant to be. This is good. And 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 encompassing all of that, I've got to confirm that you know you're thinking, would I own this car? Yeah, I definitely own this car. Definitely, 100% in a heartbeat. I'd be like, yeah, definitely. I, even the 420, I'd be like, yeah, it's fine. It's good enough. It's plenty more than enough performance. And it just feels right. It feels good. And you know, you're talking about that nose, you're talking about that grill. Sitting here behind the steering wheel, I don't see that grill anyway, so it doesn't really make a difference. But having said that, um, you will look back at the car because it has got nice lines on it when you park it, which is very important as, a, as an enthusiast. But, you know, as you drive this thing, as the affection, as the, you know, the features of the car, the driving of the car, the comfort of the car, the, the surprising practicality of the car, as you drive it, as you live with it, as all of that wins you over, you know, you start to look past, like anything that you grow an affection for, you look past its flaws. You don't, in fact, you stop, you become blind to them. You just don't see them anymore. And to be honest, over a week that I've had this car, that's what's happened to me. You know, I'm not aware, even aware of the grill anymore. Like, okay, you, you, you may have other people sort of just grimacing when they see it and stuff like that. It's something that people are still getting used to. 
but personally for me I'm not even aware of it because the rest of the car is just so brilliant in so many ways um, it's one of those cars that it may not excel in any particular area but that's a package it's hard to reach it's hard to beat it's hard to beat full stop so here I am on the motorway now uh, a couple other things uh, that uh, I'd like to mention all around visibility uh, yes you know you do have a little bit of a visibility issue over the uh, left rear shoulder with the C pillar but um, because of the size of the car because of the compactness and also because of the facility with the cameras it's not really an issue um, Brakes also very reassuring on this car, very linear, very well judged. You know, if you're not having to think about the braking, that means they've got it right. You know, it's just, you know, you don't have to even worry about it. I'm now on the motorway and I've got the active cruise control system on. And again, I've got the full graphic. With, I can see my car. I can see the car over there. I can see the car over there. Uh, it's just extraordinary how they've done that. And I've got it on uh, full active. So, okay. Uh, yeah assisted driving so now we go and then setting it to 70 miles per hour and off it goes and it's just doing its own thing now now you can actually take your hands off the wheel but after a while you will get a warning that says put your hands back yeah so it goes orange so it tells you put your hand back on the wheel so you, and you just need to loosely touch the wheel and that's that's all you really need to do with it um, and then the rest is no issue at all so overall then um, yeah, big thumbs up for this car. In fact, so much so that it's a car that I would own and I would have. You know, I'm, I'd be quite happy to have one of these. Um, very, very good. I, I would even justify the money that you're spending on it, to be honest. Uh, it's that sort of car. Uh, that I, you know, you, after, after spending a few days with it, you go, you know what? This is great. And it's even worth the money. No problem at all. Like I said, Get over the design, it's going to be with us now, it's the new BMW design language, you'll get used to it, everybody will get used to it, it's not so bad with the number plate across the middle of it, and um, you know, it, it'll, it'll be fine, don't worry about it, and also, you know, from behind the steering wheel, this car is so well resolved, it's so well sorted out, that none of that matters. So there you go, there's my review of the 420i, I'd have one, you should go out and check it out as well, let me know what you think of it in the comments above below elsewhere. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure you're subscribing to youtube.com forward slash brown car guy and hit the bell icon and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. Whilst you're at it, subscribe to browncarguy.com and follow me on social media by just searching for my hashtag that's on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even on TikTok. If you love my content, then please consider sponsoring and supporting it. And you can do that over at patreon.com forward slash brown car guy and you know what you can use my platforms to promote your product service or brand my youtube channel is now closing in on 3,000 subscribers as i record this total views are nearly 500,000, and the reach just over the last month is nearly 1 million so join these amazing people as my patrons including Muhammad Umaid in the UAE Partha in India a tech guru and social media consultant find him on parthans.com Tom Conway Gordon here in the UK Isaac Beauchard in the US he's got some great deals on cool cars at bespokeautos.com Reza Adil check him out at Alizade Cigars on Instagram Mohammed Garson, business consultant you can find him at wehms.com Siraj Abbasi at Tiles Italia on Instagram for luxury floor and wall tiling. Mark Waddell in Canada. Zach Cogliani, a globe trotting pilot with amazing images for sale at zachcogliani.com. And last but not least, my school champ Shahir Haki. Thanks for watching. More cool vids on the way. Catch you again in the next one.